And welcome to Vista Church. We're so glad you've joined us online today. You must be awesome because, you know, birds of a feather. Whatever your background or the journey that brought you here today, you will find a place of acceptance, tolerance and love because we believe you're definitely worth it.
Yo, welcome to Vista Church. It's the best Sunday. Another one at Vista Church with Pastor's nigga Bianca. family it is so awesome that you have tuned in today my name is pastor bianca moulton i'm married to the incredible pastor nick moulton we want to welcome you to our online experience we know god has a word for you and you're going to have a great time with us today well i want to start with an encouragement in a world full of opinions and information that is flying at you from every direction i want to say never stop relying on the power of the word of god in your 
life. The word of God is written in love for you. God wants you to prosper and to be in good health. He wants you to win in this life and he wants to experience his portion in your life. The word is full of truth and it's rich with wisdom and promise. And when it comes to every single area of your life, there isn't one area that the word of God cannot encourage you, cannot shed light or wisdom or truth on. And so I want to say, even in the area of your finances, when you trust what the word of God says, you will prosper. Well, let's give it a try. You know, maybe you aren't sure what to do with your finances. Maybe you have a little bit of doubt. Let's see what the word of God says. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight let's jump to verse 9 honor the lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all of your crops then your barns will be full to overflow and your vats will brim over with new wine. Come on somebody, this is so powerful. The word of God says when you don't know what to do, it says just trust. Trust means to believe, to put your hope in to rely on the integrity of the word of God, to have a confident expectation. When you're trusting his word, that's what you're doing. You trust God with your salvation. You've trusted God with your dreams and your promises and your purpose. Now let's stop struggling to trust God in the area of our finances because he is good. And he says, trust him with all your heart. Listen to this, do not lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, put your trust in him and he will lead your path straight. You see, we will never be able to give to God in the area of our finances unless we trust God, unless we trust he is who he says he is and that he can meet your needs. So church, it's time to start trusting God, to stop leaning on what we know and understand and start believing God at his word. Let's jump to verse 9 and 10 where it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth when you honor God. God. It means you celebrate God. You celebrate who he is. You glorify God with your wealth. You exalt him and esteem him in your life. You praise and you worship him with your giving and your offering. You revere and you value him when you give to God. And God says when we put our trust in him, when we give of our tithes and our first fruit, when we do those things, that he will cause your vat to brim over with new wine. He will bring new opportunities. He'll bring new favor. He'll bring new blessings upon you. You see, giving is a matter of the heart. Giving is a matter of trusting God at his word, which is so powerful and rich with promise for you. Today, I want to encourage you when it comes to your finances, would you put your trust in God? Would you trust him and not lean on your own understanding and watch what he will do in your life? Because he who has promised is faithful to complete the work that he has started. Well, we have many ways you can give here at Vista Church. You can click on the little snap, uh, snap scan icon. You can visit our website www.vistachurch.co.za and you can just click on the giving button and everything you need is right there waiting for you. Well, Vista Church, I'm going to hand over to our incredible anchors who are on another Vista adventure. Watch this. Hey Vista Church and welcome. If you are watching our service online or in person at the new Metro Cinema, we are so glad you've joined us today. My name is Candice and this is the beautiful Deanne and we are at the Blueberry Hill Hotel in Ramburg and my oh my, what beautiful views. You definitely want to check this place out. That's right Candice. Welcome Vista Church. We're so glad that you've joined us today. If you didn't come to any of our Easter weekend experiences, I'm really sorry to say, but you missed out. They were phenomenal. We really felt the presence of God in a very real and tangible way. 
and we got to witness so many people make the most important decision of their lives and that is the one to follow Jesus. Now Candice, I'm sure you'll agree nothing beats an in-person church experience, am I right? You're right. So that leaves me with a question for you. Who will you be bringing to our next Vista experience? Amen. Bring someone along. If you've been watching our experiences online, I would like to encourage you. There's nothing better than an in-person experience with your Vista family. We would love to see you. So as you know, due to COVID restrictions, we have limited space. So we'd encourage you to please book for our Sunday experiences. Bookings will open for the 18th of April, which is next week Sunday this coming Wednesday, the 14th of April at 9 a.m. So just be ready with your name and surname, a friend's name and surname, and a family member's name and surname, and send the details to info at vistachurch.ca.ca. And now we would just like to extend our gratitude and give a huge shout out to our Vista volunteers who served so selflessly and with such passion over the Easter weekend. You helped make our services a success. Now we have so much fun, our Vista team is growing, there's laughs, there's friendship, and we have a spot for you. So if you would like to join our ever-growing Vista volunteer team, why not email us on info at vistachurch.co.za if you're at home, or if you're in the service now, why not pop past our info desk on your way out, drop your name and we'll get in touch. That is right, there are so many places to serve, what are you waiting for? What are they waiting for? I don't know. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so, over the last few weeks, if you felt something resonate within your spirit and you want to make Vista Church your new spiritual home, we would encourage you to please fill out a family update form. You can do this after serv um, service on a Sunday at the Vista Info Desk. Alternatively, send an email to info at vistachurch.co.za. Well, Church, we hope you have an awesome and wonderful week ahead as you come up higher. Hey Vista Church, so glad that you've tuned in today. My name is Pastor Nick and I want to tell you we have got a phenomenal word of encouragement today. My message today is entitled, The Time of My Life. Woo, come on, why don't you watch this clip? Give thanks for the good days. When the traffic lights all turn green, when promotions come and bad habits are broken. Give thanks for warm meals and the company of friends. Give thanks for undeniable blessings and clear direction. When the music floods your soul and the worship songs flow without effort. Give thanks for coffee and clothing and hope that the two never mix. Give thanks for the mother who battles daily in prayer for the father working three jobs, for the brothers and sisters who build blanket forts and read bedtime stories. Give thanks for sons and daughters and all our family who remind us of what truly matters. Give thanks for the stranger who holds the door open and the lifelong friend who holds you when life is broken. Give thanks for the hard days, for the phone call, that brings life crashing down, for jobs lost and friendships fallen into conflict. Give thanks for the anger that reminds us we are human and the tears that express more than words could ever fathom. Give thanks, though the pain is overwhelming, your energy spent, your spirit fallen, and your only option is to fall to your knees before your Holy Father and cry out, God, please! Help me, for in that moment, his power is made perfect. His love is made evident. He becomes your strength, your comfort, and your salvation. Give thanks for the power of redemption, 
from Genesis to Revelation, for the endless promises of a God who would rather sacrifice his son than give up on his children. For nail-pierced hands, for brilliant dawns, for the cool touch of rain and the simplicity of a quiet day. For all things great and small, let us give thanks. Oh, come on. There's always a reason to give thanks to God. Come on. Can we right now come into a time of prayer that we serve a God who's unlimited? He's unlimited in power. He's unlimited in grace that you, Lord, are unlimited in mercy, in forgiveness, in second chances, in abundance, in supply in health, in healing, Lord, that today, Father, we realize with a grateful heart that, Lord, you are the one who has brought us through 2020 into 2021, and you have not stopped now, Lord. Won't you open our eyes to see and our ears to hear what you would say to us through your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. I want to tell you, church, the only limitation of God is our expectation. If we come hungry, if we come ready for God to do something, if we come for to God with a request, that's what the Bible says, seek, ask, and knock. God is wanting to meet with you today. You know, church, we live in a world of um, uh, this phrase, I need to get me some of those. <laughs> I need to get me some of that, right? Sometimes when we look at things, we see someone else's new phone, right? Someone's got a brand new cell phone. You're like looking at your old phone and you're kind of like, yeah, I need to get me one of those. I need to get me some of that, right? Someone Instagrams a brand new pair of sneakers and you're checking these shoes out, right? And maybe they got them pre-released and you're like, man, I need to get me some of those, man. Maybe when you look at our, our worship team and looking at them, you know, and they just carry the presence of God. I need to get me some of that. Come on. Fantastic. You know, in, in life, you know, we need to realize that some things that we pursue are really useless. I was looking on the internet this week of of some advert for a shower curtain and the shower curtain basically has cut out pockets for you to put your cell phone in. So it's a clear pocket and the advert goes that you can read your email in the shower. Let me help you there. You do not need one of them. If you are reading your email in the shower, then I need to pray for you. I need to pray with you. See, we're living in a time where we want it all. And I want to tell you, companies latch onto this. It's like when you go and get a brand new contract with um, your cell phone provider and you're wanting big on the data, not so much on the minutes. And they give you this random package with the salesperson is, but it's got unlimited text SMS messages. Wow. Thank you. Insert cell phone provider. That's not exactly what I want. You know, we spend our time, our lives trying to gain the whole world. But today I want to tell you there is something far, far more important than all of that. See, the Bible looks at this far differently. And the Bible teaches us from people that have done everything. King Solomon, not only did he have virtually everything in his time, he had all wisdom and he came to the point that so many things are meaningless. So many things are empty. And my prayer for you is that you do not reach the end of your life unfulfilled and empty. I want to read from the book of Psalms chapter 90 and verse 12. And here the the Bible tells us, so teach us to number our days that we may get us a heart of wisdom. I love the language of the Amplified, that we may get us. I need to get me some of that. I need to get me some of what the Bible's offering. See, the Bible says, teach us to number our days that we need to know that our days are limited. There is a time to be born. And I want to to share with you today that there is a time to die. You know, sometimes we want life to go on forever. There is an assigned time today 
to die. The Bible says, teach us to number our days because we need to know that our days are numbered. We don't have all the time in the world to live the life that God has created us to live. You were born in this generation, in this time with a purpose. See, if we're going to number our days, church, we need to start with number one. See, there's an order to your life. The things that you place priority on have an influence on everything else in your life. And so you may be wondering what these jars are all about, right? Well, I've got these jars and this jar represents your life, right? It can represent a week of your life, a day of your life, but it's a representation of your life. And inside we find all these pebbles, right? These are not the big ones. These are just small kind of little pebbles here, but these are the things that we give priority. These are not wrong priorities, but they are often the ones that demand the most from us. See, it's half full right now, and we can come into our day half full, and, and these small priorities can even represent social media. How much time do we spend on social media? A priorities of, of resting, right? Running errands, sitting on the couch, watching TV, come on, watching endless episodes um, of, of uh, Netflix or whatever. They're non-essential because I want to tell you at the end of the, your life, these are not the things you're going to be talking about. At the end of your life, you know, you're not going to be saying, you know what, give me, give me five more minutes of social media. Please, God, I need five more minutes of social media. I, Lord, I need five more minutes to sit on the couch. Lord, I need five more minutes of TV. You see, these are not the things that you are going to be saying at the end of your life. And so I have these rocks and these rocks represent the main priorities, the, the number one priorities in our life. And I think I'm going to take the biggest one. Let's go with this one. And this really represents God. How many of you know that as believers that God is the biggest priority in our life? Sometimes he's the one that we give the least time to and we say, oh, God will understand. But really what we give time to is an indication of our priority. And so we want to add God into our life right there. The second rock, the second biggest one may be our family. I want to tell you family matters. Your marriage, your marriage doesn't work unless you work to make it work. I want to tell you if you're married today, marriage is not just there. It's something that you work on. It should be a priority. Time with your kids, being a parent. And so we, we, we try and get that into the mix. The third one, I don't know what the third one is for you. Maybe it's your dreams, your passions, something that you're gifted for, a talent, your ability, something that you know, maybe you don't work in it right now, but you know it's something that has always been a priority in your life. Maybe for you it's fitness, right? And as we try and put it into our life, you'll see that it, it really, it doesn't fit, right? And so God would ask us today not to drop all these small priorities. He's asking us to consider the order, to consider the order of these things, right? And so if we could start our day with, with God, right? If we could take our day, if this represents our life over here and, and this represents a day or our entire life that we could place God first, God right in the beginning as our biggest priority. And then we come to family, our marriage, our time with our children, and we make space for that there, right? And then we come to our passions, our dreams, gym, our fitness, whatever these other large things are, and we place them in here, right? And then we can take all these other things, and I want to show you something quite incredible, right? We can take all the things, the, the, the priorities that are not that important, and once we've got the big things in place, and then we add the other things... You get the idea, right? We're able to make all these other things work. You know what? If we can start our day with God, 
Be intentional. The time we take with our family and friends, it's amazing that when we're in social media, how 30 minutes goes by like that. But when we're having a conversation with a loved one, sometimes it can feel like it goes on forever. Don't look at your spouse. Don't look at your kids right now. Kids, don't look at your parents, right? You know, I don't want to die young, right? And so fitness needs to be a priority. And as we poured these things in, I want to tell you there is order with the small priorities. As we make the big things our priority, this is why, church, order matters. What we order first matters. And so, church, I want to encourage you today. Can you prioritize God in this week? Come on, the time of your life, the time allocated to you. Can you prioritize God if you will place God force first in your day? Not coming to the end of your day and saying a prayer, um, you know, bless this day, bless me as I lay me down to sleep kind of thing. But in the morning, giving God your priority. When you give God your priority, He has the power to bless everything else that we do in our day. Can I get an amen? Come on. That is who God is. It's not about getting rid of everything, all the other things that are important and all the other things that are urgent. It's about placing thy priority on the things that matter. Order in your day matters. Can I get an amen today? Come on. And so today I want to share with you a couple of points, right? And they may not be um, amazing things that you didn't already know, but these are important things that we need to know. You see, if you want to see what a person prioritizes, you just have to look where they spend their time and their money. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27, it says this, The fear of the Lord prolongs life. Hallelujah. Come on. But the years of the wicked will be short. See, the word fear there comes from the Hebrew word yira, which means awesome, to be awestruck, to be in reverence. See, when we place God as the priority in our lives, when we place Him not just as our chomi, not just as our friend, our cosmic buddy, but when we give Him first place in our lives, right? When we are in awe of God, the Word of God says that He will prolong our lives. I love that. I want us to look at this passage in Ephesians 5. Verse 15 to 17, it says, Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthy and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise. In other words, the Bible says wisdom means to live with purpose, right? Verse 16, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Come on. Not just being careful. The Bible's saying being very careful with how we spend the precious resource of time. I love how the New King James Version puts it. Have we got any New King Jamers in the house? Come on. It says this, buying up each opportunity is redeeming the time. In other words, putting back in place the most important things in your life. See, God is saying, put these things back in place. See, God doesn't just want us to redeem our time. You see, when we place God as a priority in our lives, God Himself redeems our time. Can I get a hallelujah? When you prioritize God, when you make God the priority, He redeems your life. Can we be the church, come on, that places Jesus Christ as major one in our lives. Let there not be no other major one other than Jesus Christ. Because when we do, I want to tell you, church, He will redeem our time. Woo, come on. You know, so many times we look at the mistakes we've made. The year 2020, that which you lost in 2020, that which set you back. Come on, can we give God some thanks today for the ability that God says, if you will reorder some things, if you will reprioritize me, I have the ability to redeem your 
time. Church, can we begin to prioritize the important? See, as we go into today's message, I'm going to give you four very quick points today. But the greatest discipline in life, I want to say to you, is not just learning something new. Listen, the world is full of knowledge and knowledge is fantastic. But it's time, church, that we gather some of the things we already know. And by implementing things we already know, we gain wisdom. That's what the Bible says, how it equates in these scriptures about understanding to number our days, that we would understand what wisdom truly, truly is. See, it's about reminding what we already know and to walk in what we already know. See, new knowledge is useless until we turn the knowledge we already know into wisdom. Can I get an amen? And so today, point number one, when it comes to the time of your life, I want to encourage you, point number one, if you're making notes, your most valuable asset is time. Your most valuable asset that you have is time. We all have the same 14,140 seconds in a day, right? The same as anyone else. Have you ever asked anyone on their deathbed, they will say the most precious resource we have is time. See, you can lose some money. You can make some bad business decisions, some bad investment decisions, and you can gain it back. You can lose friends along the way, but you can also make new friends, right? And God can redeem friends, right? But when time is spent, it is spent. I want to say to you, don't waste these moments as you're watching online, wondering what is happening on social media, don't minimize this and looking at other things or worrying about lunch or whatever else. Make the most important things the most important thing. Come on. Spending time in the presence of God. Spending time with God in church, online or in person. And so we would love to see you in person. Point number two, we can't manage time, but we can manage the opportunities. Number two, we can't manage time, but we can manage opportunities. Einstein said that time management is an oxymoron, right? You cannot manage time and you can't stop time, pause time or redirect time. But what you can manage are the moments afforded to you. Don't waste opportunities. Don't waste the opportunities with your children. Listen, for some of the people at Vista Church, been chatting to some of them, they are blown away by how quickly their kids are growing up from an infant to a toddler, you know, growing through the stages, going through from primary school into high school, rapidly going through high school into uh, tertiary education, tertiary studies, right? We cannot do that. We can't manage our time. We can't manage time. Time cannot be managed, right? But we can manage the moments that we're given. Point number three. This is so important. This is something that I've really had to learn in my life. We cannot do everything, right? We cannot do everything in life. There are so many things as a pastor that I want to do. So much vision. So many things that I want to get started. But the important thing in this season is to focus on the main things. We can't do everything. You know, if you ever wanted to start a hobby and suddenly you're doing um, surfing and you're doing mountain biking and golf and hiking and suddenly there's not enough weekend to do all those things. You cannot do everything. Jesus had three years of ministry on this planet. And let me help you. He didn't do anything. There were people that he walked past that he didn't heal. The ones who cried out, the ones who pursued, pursued him, received healing, right? But he didn't do everything while he was here on the planet. He learned to do the most important things, right? He also spent nights praying, and that's really interesting. He prioritized prayer. 
Sometimes we go on holiday like to Durban and, and, and I don't know, someone in the family who's very organized scheduled how it's going to roll, right? And suddenly you've got to fit in Ushaka, the Durban promenade. You want to go to Belito. You want to go to Salt Rock, right? You want to go to Gateway Shopping Center. You want to go in the cinema to Stekening or Gateway and watch six blockbuster movies, play pinball, laser tag, um, go-karting, go to the Moses Mabita Stadium. And suddenly it is so jam-packed with so many things you come back completely exhausted and the point of you going away never really happens hello you see if we don't manage the big things the small things will take over we don't manage those big things right the small things will not just fill up half the jar they'll take up the whole jar I've learned something in this season that successful people, they have a to-do list, but they also have a not-to-do list. You cannot stretch yourself so thin. See, only you can be a father or a mother to your children. Don't delegate that responsibility, right? Only you can be a dad to your child. Only you can be a mom to your child. Come on. Even at, at our church, I've realized we cannot do everything. And if I'm trying to do everything, I'm robbing someone else of an opportunity to serve, to grow in their faith. I've also learned that, you know, sometimes people just want to delegate things to everyone else because they don't want to do it. And let me encourage you, don't ask someone else in life ever to do something that you are not willing to do yourself. And so when you go into your week, right? The time of your life. Evaluate your week. Work out the things that only you can do. Only I can do this, right? See, at our church, there's a lot of things that we can do, a lot of things we can focus on that we can do. But the main thing is we need to look at who we are as a church. This church is a church about touching heaven and changing earth. In other words, what are we doing? We're populating heaven. If we can encounter heaven, there is no lack, there is no sickness, there is no fear, there is no disappointment in heaven. If we can bring heaven to earth, we can revolutionize this planet in Jesus' name. So often why we don't prioritize the big things, right? The reasons why we don't manage, um, you know, when we're planning our week, why we don't do it well is because there is so often no immediate payoff, even with our time with God, right? Because we operate from a place of faith, praying in the morning, asking God to bless your day, beginning to get into the word. There's no immediate payoff. It comes when you dig beneath the surface, right? If you invested 10 minutes a day into the word of God, I want to tell you consistently, you will become a different person at the end of 2021. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, however long you're going to spend in the presence of God. It's the same with fitness, right? If you spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day, right? Or 20 minutes a few days a week investing in your health, you're not going to be six months down the line coming out of winter saying, man, look at all the weight I've picked up. You see, things like gym, there's no immediate payoff. There's no quick weight loss plan, no quick weight reduction. So many of us try and jam pack it. We'll go to gym for two hours, right? Man, and you get home and you're feeling like you took on the world, but then you have no energy to ever go back to gym, right? It's being consistent in the small things with an allocated period of time that in due course, you will reap an incredible reward. See, decide what matters in your life and then De make the decision to manage that decision every single day. My last point today, church, I want to encourage you, make time for renewal, make room for renewal. In 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, it says this, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are renewed day by day. Time with God. That's why Jesus prioritized time with the Father. Time spent with God will renew us from the inside out. 
This is a reprioritizing the things that are truly important. I want to tell you rest is important. The, the Old Testament, where they followed the Old Testament law, God put in place to honor the Sabbath. The Jewish nation would not work on the Sabbath. They only work six days. Other nations would work seven days. But the children of God had incredible wealth generated because they were blessed. Their crops were blessed. Why? Because they honored times of rest. And I know as a New Testament believer that the Sabbath is really a picture of a life that we can live every single day. Make time in your day for renewal. Some things are wasted time and some things are renewable time. Sometimes when you have a day off, it's not just about lying on a couch all day. It's about doing things that energize you, doing things that you're passionate about. And suddenly all your tanks go from empty back to full. So do not neglect church, the things that are important, things like church. Do not neglect the gathering of the saints. We're back in full swing um, at New Metro Cinemas. And I want to tell you, we are having incredible encounters in the presence of God. These are the important things. That is a time of renewal. You could sleep late and I guarantee it will not have the same impact on you as spending time in the presence of God. I want to end with this passage of scripture. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. It says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. We're not running against anyone. We're running in our own line with the time that God has allocated to us on this planet. If we're going to run a sprint, or run in that first we're going left, then we're going right, then we're going left, then we're going right. Or are we going to take each day, not allow all those small priorities that are maybe urgent or important to overshadow the most important things in our life, to place God above everything else, to make time with our family, to make time in our marriages. Come on and to prioritize our gifts, our talents. Take the time to rest in order to be renewed. Do the things that revitalize you. And I want to tell you, your best days will be ahead of you. Our God has the ability to redeem time. And so as we end today, I don't care how far you are from Jesus. If you've been watching for the first time, maybe you're watching and you're thinking my life's a mess. I can never get out of the hole that I'm in. I want to introduce you today to Jesus. He will redeem your life. He will lift you out from where you're at and he will give you a hope and a future. If today you want to invite Jesus Christ into your heart, I want to pray with you and for you. And so won't you pray this prayer with me today? Say this after me. Repeat this prayer after me. If today you'd like to invite Jesus into your life, say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I choose you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Forgive me of my past. Forgive me of my sin and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer today, I would love to hear from you. Drop us an email or send us a DM on any of our social media platforms. Our email address is on the screen right now, info at vistachurch.co.za. We would love to hear from you. For all of us today, I really hope that this message has reminded you of the time of your life our days are numbered. Teach us to number our days that in this season we will focus on the main thing. We'll prioritize the important. We're not going to get wrapped up doing what we shouldn't be doing this side of eternity. God bless you. We're going to go into a time of worship right now and Vista Bear at the end. Won't you worship with us? Come on.
is awesome! I'm glad you have your safety gear on. Safety first! <laughs> Look at me! I'm a builder! Did you know that Jesus talks about building a house in the Bible when he teaches us about how good it is to obey God's word? To help us understand, he tells a story of two men who decided to each build a house. The one man was wise. He Hi. wanted a strong house that could handle anything. He knew he had to have a strong foundation, so he built his house on the rock. The rain came down, and the winds blew hard against his house, but it did not fall, because it had a good foundation on the rock. But the other man was foolish. He didn't listen when people gave him advice, and he built his house on the sand. Then the rain came down, and the winds blew hard against his house on the sand. His house fell to the ground with a big crash! No, please, no! See, kids, Jesus is telling us this story so we can understand that the Word of God helps us. And, like the wise man, when we build our life on God's Word, we can handle all the storms and problems that come our way. But, if we don't have the Word of God in our lives, and we don't listen and obey, then we will be like the foolish man, whose house couldn't handle the difficult times, and fell down. Oh wow! I love God, and His Word is so powerful! I want to learn and do what it says, so I can stay strong! <laughs> me too! Me too! Let's learn some Bible! Say after me! Matthew 7.24 Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Matthew 7:24. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Great job, kids. Well, kids, I have to run, but remember, God is always there for you. He loves you so much. Have a very good day. Thank you so much, Mr. Bear. We love you. Bye, Mr. Bear. And bye, Mr. Kids. We love you. Come on. Let's go help Uncle Bob build his house on the rock. Yippee. And let's see the big crane, too. Vista, yeah. what a beautiful view from a high position With Christ in the center, there is nothing missing Yeah, we praise with open arms and we receive your gift Revelation 4-1, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this Yeah, I lift my eyes to the mountains, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord